We've been on Viking Mars for three days. So what do we think so far? Well, it's coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise Report from Viking Mars, somewhere in Scandinavia. I think we're on our way to Gdansk, Poland today. This is day four of our cruise, and so we've experienced three full days on board Viking Mars. I want to give you a quick update, just kind of let you know how things are going so far, tell you a little bit about this beautiful new ship. I have a lot of cool stuff to share with you today, but before I get started, I want to remind you, if you're passionate about cruising, especially if you're adults cruising together, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. That way YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. So first, let's talk about embarkation. We embarked in Stockholm, Sweden. We arrived the day before, spent a night at a hotel. The next day, we got an Uber over to the port. They started embarkation about 11 o'clock in the morning, and there were already some people here lined up when we got here to uh, embark the ship. Embarkation, super, super easy. Uh, maybe the easiest and the smoothest embarkation we've had so far. All we had to do is show our passport. Uh, they gave us our stateroom keys and invited us to board the ship. There were no pre-COVID, pre-cruise COVID tests required. We didn't even have to show our vaccination records when we boarded the ship. No temperature checks. Uh, they've done away with that little medallion that was required last year on Viking Orion. Uh, like a contact tracing medallion, that's gone. Uh, so very, very smooth, very easy embarkation. Uh, once we got on board the ship, we were given a glass of champagne, greeted on board, and invited to go to the safety drill, or the safety meeting, I should say, in the STARS Theater on Deck 2. And uh, basically, it was just a real short demonstration on how to put on the, the life vest. You know, it was, uh, that was it. Now, we were told when we boarded the ship that our stateroom wasn't going to be ready until 1 o'clock. But we thought, well, let's just go by there and see if we could drop off our hand luggage because our checked bags we had had shipped to Stockholm from Dallas-Fort Worth using luggage forward, which I'll talk about in a minute. We went by the stateroom and we did meet our stateroom attendant out in the hall, Ida, and he informed us that the stateroom was in fact ready. And it was only maybe 11.30 maybe in the morning. So we, we went ahead and dropped off our luggage went up and had a quick lunch at the World Cafe, which is a Viking's buffet restaurant. And then by the time we went back down to our stateroom, our two large pieces of luggage, which we had had shipped from luggage forward, were already outside of our stateroom. So we were go ready to go ahead and get unpacked. Now, let me tell you a little bit about luggage forward because there's a ton of problems right now with airlines losing people's luggage. Over 220,000 pieces of lost luggage in April this year alone. We've used Luggage Forward in the past. It's a service where you go to their website, you book it online, you can have them pick up your luggage, your checked bags, your large luggage, and they will ship it via DHL, FedEx, or one of these shipping companies. They'll ship it to your port of embarkation. And typically what happens is you won't see your luggage until you get on the ship. Uh, they can have it shipped to your hotel too. If you're staying in a pre-cruise hotel, you can also have it sent to the hotel. It's a great service. We highly recommend it. I'll put links in the description of this video down below. So if you're interested, you can check it out there. Of course, this ship is brand new. I think we're, I don't know if we're on the fifth or sixth cruise. It hasn't been out very long and you can tell it. I mean, everything looks brand new. Of course, all the Viking ships always look nice because they do an excellent job of maintaining the ships. 
uh, one good thing about the Viking ships for some people. Now, some people like this, some people don't. But all of the Viking ocean ships are identical, pretty much. I mean, there's a few minor changes from ship to ship, but they're pretty much identical. Now, when we do our final review, I'll point out to you those little minor details that are different about Viking Mars than some of the other ships we've been on. When you sail on Viking, you already know your way around. You get on board the ship, you know where the restaurants are, you know where you, you know the theater is, you know where the shops are, you know where all the lounges are. It's a very, very low stress environment. Plus the ships are small enough to where they're very, very easy to get around. So I kind of like that. When we got on board, I knew exactly where to go. I knew how to get to the pool grill. I knew how to get to the World Cafe. It's a very um, low stress type of travel. And I think that appeals to a lot of people, especially the Viking faithful. Now, one issue we did have just in the first few days is Ricky uh, has some eye drops that have to stay frozen. These are made from a blood plasma. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this process. There's a name for them and I can't remember the name right off the top of my head but they they have to stay frozen and we were hoping when we got on board that we would be able to through our room steward or the front desk or somehow they would be able to put these in a freezer somewhere maybe in the medical center or in the galley she has them in a little yeti she keeps them in uh, they're just in little vials and they have to stay frozen because once they thaw out they're only good for a week and we're going to be on here for two weeks so she brought a couple of extra vials with her Unfortunately, they were not able to accommodate that request. Uh, something to do with the medical center and I guess potential, they feel like maybe there's a potential for uh, bacteria or hazardous whatever. So uh, if, if you are in a situation, I know Ricky's not the only one that has these particular eye drops that have to stay frozen, but if you have any medical uh, issues where something has to remain frozen, you might need to contact Viking in advance. We didn't do that. We probably should have made some sort of arrangements in advance. Uh, so for now, it looks like she'll probably be without eye drops for the second half of the trip. Now, one of the reasons I recommend that you, you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification bell is because at the end of this cruise, I'll be doing a series of full reviews. We'll do a full dining review, all the different dining options, dining venues. I'll be doing an in-depth review of this particular stateroom. This is kind of their, I can't remember the category name. I'll put it on the screen for you. And we will be doing a review of all the features of the stateroom. There are a few changes from the last time we stayed in a stateroom like this. They're very minor, but I'll make sure to mention those so that you'll be aware should you book a Viking cruise. And then we're going to do a full-blown ship review, just of every single area of the ship. And if any, of you, any of those of you who have watched my previous ship reviews, you know that we go into quite a bit of detail. And so if you're interested in a cruise ship, if you're interested in the dining, if you're interested in all the various aspects of the Viking experience and Viking Mars, make sure you watch those videos. So go ahead and subscribe so you make sure that you don't miss those. One thing, early observation I've noticed right off the bat is that the Wi-Fi has not improved. And this is really not just a Viking issue. This is just an issue in the cruise industry. There's a lot more bad Wi-Fi on cruise ships than there is good. I can only think of maybe two or three ships that we've ever been on that had what I would call exceptional internet connection, Wi-Fi. We had decent Wi-Fi the first day or two. Now we're at a day at sea and for some reason it's just almost, you know, it's almost unusable. So after we embarked in Stockholm, we spent the night in Stockholm on the ship and then the next day, the ship remained in Stockholm until about four or five o'clock, about, about the time for afternoon tea, because we did a sail away during afternoon tea. But we did do a, a tour 
a short uh, excursion. It's one of the included excursions that Viking includes in the cruise fare. And it was a panoramic Stockholm, I believe was the name of it. And basically it's a motor coach tour where you get on a coach and you ride around Stockholm. And we had a local tour guide. She did a really nice job of pointing out different points of interest along the way. We made one stop along the way at the city hall, the Stockholm city hall. Uh, we had beautiful weather. It was sunny, sun was shining, really nice, about 75 degrees, perfect weather. And so we enjoyed that excursion. And then when we got back on board, we wanted to, uh, we didn't have lunch. We just went to afternoon tea at four o'clock, which uh, for those of you that have sailed on Viking, you know that, or Viking Ocean, that they do an excellent job with their afternoon tea service. It's in the Winter Garden, which is a space uh, kind of in the center of the ship up on the, one of the top decks. Just a beautiful area. And they do, you know, the multi-tiered platter with the sweets and the sandwiches and then the uh, a a variety of different teas that you can order. And then, of course, my favorite are the fresh scones with the strawberry jam and clotted cream. And we basically sat there and enjoyed our tea right next to a window. We were able to get a window uh, table. And as we were sailing out of Stockholm, getting to watch all the little islands go by, it was actually a very, very nice experience. And then later that evening, we got to see our first production show, which was called the ABBA Songbook, performed by the Viking vocalists. But we did enjoy the ABBA. If you're, if you're an ABBA fan, you would really love it. The theater was packed. In fact, just that brings up another point. The ship is pretty full. There's about, I think Aaron told us there's like 780 people on board this sailing and the ship only holds 900 and something. So it's a pretty full ship and it feels pretty full. But it, you know, the ship is full, which is good. They're, hopefully they're making money at that level. Now, yesterday the ship was in Maryham in the Ayland Islands. I hope I'm saying that right. We have never been there before. It's a really interesting little place. We didn't have an excursion booked in Maryham. We just got off the ship and wandered around. Very easy if you want to just walk into town on your own. Very easy walk. It's, it's marked all along the way. Uh, in, there's a path that goes right into the center of town. It's basically a pedestrian shopping area. And you, you know, all kinds of shops, cafes, you could have lunch in town if you wanted to. Uh, they are on the Euro, whereas in Sweden, they have their own money. The kroner, I believe, is the Swedish currency. So uh, if you have Euro, you can spend it here in Maryham. Uh, there's also a, a large, like a tall ship parked behind us uh, on in Maryham, and it was a, it's like a museum. It's built in 1903. It's a, it actually has an iron hull, but it was a, a grain merchant type ship. Uh, very interesting and very historical. So we were told that if we used our stateroom key, we could get in for free. I normally have to buy a ticket, but they allow Viking guests to go aboard this ship for free. And you can basically walk around, see the ship, see all the different parts of the ship. Uh, they have a little audio tour guide if you want to, if you want to do that. So we really enjoyed that. Just something to do and it's free and easy. And you know, you can walk to it in less than five minutes. It's right there. Oh, I should also mention if you do decide to go into town in Maryham, you can also take a free shuttle. You don't have to walk. It's about probably, I'd say it's about a mile walk into town. It maybe takes you 15 minutes if you're a leisurely walk. It's not a hard walk. There's no stairs or hills or anything like that. But in case you have mobility challenges, they do have a free shuttle. It's like a little train uh, that you can hop on, hop off type of thing. And it'll take you into the center of town for free, drop you off. And we did that. We actually took the little tram into town and then we decided we wanted to walk back because we wanted to get the exercise. Last night, we had our first dinner at Manfredi's, which is one of our favorite restaurants at sea, if not our favorite. It's just, it's an Italian restaurant. It's on every Viking Ocean ship. 
and uh, just excellent food. I'm going to go into much more detail on that uh, in my dining review when I do that. There are some changes. There are some things that have changed since our last cruise and previous cruises. So you'll want to, if you're, if you're a Viking fan and you love Manfredi's, you're going to want to watch that video because I'm going to tell you what's changed at Manfredi's in that video. Uh, just don't have time today to get into all of that. And after dinner last night, we went to another performance in the Stars Theater from Adam Johnson, a vir virtuoso pianist. Very good show. If you have a chance to see him on a Viking Ocean ship, make sure you do it. Uh, it was a very, very uh, entertaining, very good show. What we've been doing before dinner, when we go to dinner, we've been going out to the atrium and just enjoying the, um, I think it's called Monk Moments. It's the artist monk, and they show his uh, paintings up on this huge LED screen there in the atrium while you're listening to classical music. It's just a great place to have a drink and kind of gather before dinner. It's I think from 6 to 6.45 each evening. So we enjoy that. Uh, Viking is a uh, a very relaxed cruise. It's not, uh, there's, there's not a lot of frenetic energy going on. There's not a lot of announcements. It's a very quiet, laid back, very adult oriented. This is not a cruise for families. This is a cruise for adults. And uh, we'll go into more detail on that in my final review, just in case you're not that familiar with Viking Ocean. Now, as I said, tomorrow we'll be in Gdansk, Poland. I'm going to go through two or three more days before I update you with another video, partially because it's not easy uploading these videos. I have to wait for the right day and time. I can't do it every day. But uh, I appreciate you watching this. If you like this video, please click that like button. It really does help with our YouTube rankings. And make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook because I'm posting photos and video clips throughout the day that you won't find anywhere else. It won't be in our reviews. It won't be on these videos. And uh, I'm always updating that Instagram the, the live feed and the, and the story. So check out our Facebook story and our Instagram stuff, and I will see you on the next Cruise Report.